This is Bellevue Now. In King County, the 2017 point in time count found more than 11,600 people are experiencing homelessness countywide. This number includes more than 6,000 people sheltering in transitional housing or emergency shelters and nearly 5,500 people on the streets sleeping in vehicles, tents and encampments. The one night count of homeless individuals, now known as Count Us In, used a new process and methodology for the count. For the east side, there are reportedly 284 homeless individuals living here. For more on how the city of Bellevue is addressing this regional issue are our guests. We have Terry Smith, who's the assistant director for Bellevue's Parks and Community Services Department. And we also have Captain Andrew Papachuk of the Bellevue Police Department. Well, welcome gentlemen to the program. Thank you. Well, Terry, let's start with you. How is the city approaching a societal issue that isn't easily solved? Yeah, thanks, Lanka. As a city, we're primarily focused on four areas from both a prevention and an intervention strategy. Those include outreach, support services, facilities, and enforcement. Prevention services can include basic needs, emergency financial assistance or counseling. Uh, services for individuals experiencing homelessness can include job retraining programs, housing assistance, or addiction treatment. Facilities are important in helping both from having a day center, a place people can go during the day, and or overnight shelter. Both of these provide opportunities for people to have a place to stay, maybe store their belongings, and also have access to some services that can help them either transition out of homelessness or again on the prevention side. While we're working collaboratively with several organizations, both locally and regionally, we work with King County and their Hall Home Initiative. Locally on the east side, we work especially with Kirkland, Redmond, and Issaquah. We also work very closely with local nonprofit agencies and faith communities who actually provide many of the programs and services and operate the facilities that we have here on the east side. All right, well, Andrew, as a police captain, you've become acquainted with some of the homeless individuals who are living here in Bellevue and on the east side. Through the annual count, we've learned that the vast majority of them are actually from the area. What else might surprise people to know about these individuals who are experiencing homelessness? I think what people uh don't understand about the situation how complex it truly is. Uh, those people are on the streets for a variety of different reasons. You have everything from the people who truly got into a bad financial situation and lost their place to live. You have the people who are using drugs, uh, especially with the opioid epidemic in the area. You have people that are abusing alcohol and other substances. Um, you also have people that are dealing with mental illness. Um, and all those are very tragic circumstances that get people onto the street. You also have a section of the homeless community that just truly wants to be homeless. Um, and all of those in combination of, of one or more of those factors causes certain people to be resistant to options to get out of homelessness. So it's a very complex problem and the solution is also very complex. And Terry, the trend we're seeing nationally is housing first in order to make homelessness a rare, brief, and infrequent occurrence. Explain to us a little more how this strategy works in practice. Sure, Housing First is a homeless assistance approach that prioritizes providing permanent housing to people experiencing uh, homelessness first, because that ends their homelessness. And from there, you can build a platform that helps people to get additional services or resources that can keep them out of being homeless. So the general idea of providing and supporting those basic needs is a foundational port to moving someone, an individual, out of homelessness. You know, Belfio also recently adopted an affordable housing strategy. And the, that strategy includes actions such as increasing the supply of very low or low income housing. And those serve families and individuals that either are at risk of becoming homeless and or are trying to transition out of homelessness. And Andrew, there have been some community concerns raised about what's known as vehicle residency. That's when someone's living in their car or RV. How has the police department been handling this issue? Well, we have a multi-prong approach. Our very first approach is always going to be outreach. Uh, we send officers out to contact people in the vehicles. 
We also have partnerships with different community organizations that go with us, or maybe we ask them to go separately to contact these people. The goal is always to get the person out of homelessness. We'd like them out of the cars and into how, either transitional housing or full housing so that they are no longer in at a risk because it is risky to be out on the streets at night. Um, the next step is always enforcement. Um, if we offer the resources and, and they choose not to accept the resources, we expect all residents of Bellevue, whether or not they're homeless or not homeless, to obey the laws. And we ask the same of these individuals, whether it be parking laws, whether it be dumping laws, whether it be um, you know, sewage laws out of some of the RVs, we expect them to obey the laws just like we expect every citizen to. And we would take enforcement action that may be towing, that may be ticketing those cars. Um, the next step is if you look at the outreach side. So the outreach side, it may take more than 24 hours. And we understand that from citizens that causes frustration sometimes that the car is sitting there for over 24 hours because the parking rules say that you must move your vehicle within 24 hours. But the goal is always outreach, is getting the person out of the car. And that may take many contacts over and over. But if we, get, we reach the goal of getting that person out of the car and into housing, it's a great benefit to the city as a whole. It gets the person in, into a full residence. It reduces the amount of calls on emergency services. It also uh, makes the residents happy that there's not that issue of the vehicle being parked there. Part of our enforcement strategy is actually to set up a task force to address the parking concerns. And we've set that up and we specifically use that task force to go to areas where we've had citizens complain about parking. And we will do the outreach and then we will also do the enforcement from that task force. Yeah, and Andrew, let's talk a little bit about panhandling. That's when you see someone approaching cars, stopped at a light, or perhaps pedestrians on the corner. They're asking for money. What should someone do? Well, first off, we always say don't give money to panhandlers. We don't want you to give the money to them. There's so many great organizations out in the community that do excellent work. So we would prefer if you gave the money to those organizations. It is a constitutionally protected right for that person to go ask for money but it's also constantly protected for you not to give them money. It is your choice not to give them uh, the money on the street corner. Um, why we say that is because there's many reasons like I talked about before. You have the financial reasons, you have the drug, the alcohol reasons for people to being on the street. Um, you don't know if that money is genuinely needed by that person to obtain housing tonight, or is it for drugs and alcohol? Or is that person abusing the system and they're actually a housed person that is out there collecting money because we are a very generous city. Our citizens give out large amounts of money to people on the street corner. There's also the fact that, like I said, you don't, aren't obligated to give that person money. We do, if you have concerns about this, we do have a statute in Bellevue that prohibits aggressive panhandling. And what that would be is using intimidation to have you give them money. If you have any doubts if the person is being in, intimidating towards you, you can always call the police department. We don't mind responding. Um, also, the person's out blocking the roadway, obstructing traffic, you can always call us as well. If it ends up being not a crime, we still have the opportunity to do outreach, like I talked before. It gives our opportunity for officers to have one more contact. Sometimes it takes many, many, many contacts before someone will accept the services provided. So we want you to contact us when you see that behavior because it gives us one more opportunity to not only educate the person, but possibly get them into the services they need. Terry Bellevue has had a temporary winter shelter for men for several years now and is currently seeking to site a permanent shelter. How do services like this help in addressing homelessness? Sure, I think Captain Papachuk has mentioned uh, some of the reasons for having a winter shelter in that people are outside and they are in, uh, in exposed to the winter elements. So the, the idea of a winter shelter, either it's for men or we also on the east side provide shelters for women or families. It, it gets someone out of the elements into a safe, warm place. Many times they'll get a meal, but also there's opportunities to access services that may help them either transition out of homelessness or give them some basic things to help them really make it through the day. So again, our primary focus is on prevention um, and getting people uh, out of uh, being homeless. That being said, we also recognize that things do occur and sometimes individuals do end up being homeless and these shelters can provide some of that temporary support and we are seeing a growth in that need in here on the east side. 
Yeah, and as you've both stated, homelessness is a complex issue, and it's one that's not just occurring here in Bellevue, but it's uh, in the Puget Sound region, the east side, as well as nationally, we're seeing more homelessness. Uh, if someone wants to help, what do you suggest they do? Yeah, we encourage people to volunteer. You can contact local nonprofits or faith groups, and you can uh, volunteer meals. You can help out with shelters. There's a lot of different opportunities. You can also give. You can give money, um, or you can give resources. Sometimes that can be food or clothing to local agencies that can use that uh, those materials to support individuals who are homeless. Uh, we all we we definitely don't believe that we that you should be giving money directly to panhandlers, as Captain Puppetchuk has has mentioned. That there's a lot of uh, better use of those dollars by providing those to faith groups or agencies on, that uh, help support the needs of individuals experiencing homelessness. Yeah. Anything else that you'd like to add? I would encourage anybody watching this to make sure you talk to your friends and, and coworkers about it and make sure everybody's educated about the homelessness in the area. Um, and then also if they hear disinformation to make sure they try to correct it. Great. Well, thank you both for joining me for the thank program. You. And for the latest news about our city, be sure to visit us online at BellevueWA.gov. Until next time, have a great day.